Content warning, this video shows raw MRI imagery. This is my brain, home to over 200 billion nerve cells. I'm actually a little bit surprised it's there. You know, I thought it would be, but you know, it's nice to have the validation. A couple of years back, I was lucky enough to be a test participant in a neuroscience study. Now, I can't quite remember what the study was for, but at the end of it, I ended up with a copy of my own brain data both an fMRI scan, a functional MRI scan, and a structural scan, which shows the structure of my brain, the white matter and the grey matter. Now, this information has been sat on a CD on my shelf for a couple of years, and I thought, you know what, it's finally time to do something with it. What better than to 3D print my own brain? Check this out, it's my brain. So that's my right eye there. I think that's my visual cortex. Um, I'm not entirely sure what else of the other parts of the brain regions are. Hopefully someone can say in the comments. <laughs> so this actually was a fMRI study that I was a part of. And you can actually see the brain activity in some of the regions here. I won't be using this data in this uh, little product, but I thought that was pretty cool to see. And something I didn't quite expect is that's my teeth. Kind of reminds me a bit of the uh, the Smarter Every Day logo. <laughs> anyway, from here, I'm gonna now convert all these files from the DICOM file format into, I think, NII, which is then used for FreeSurfer to download. Before I get ahead of myself, FreeSurfer is open source software used to visualize and analyze neuroimaging data, such as MRI scans. It runs best under Linux, so I'm using Ubuntu via Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL for short, for these steps. I had to install a few extra dependencies that were listed on its installation page for everything to work smoothly a little bit later down the line. Okay, so I'm currently going through the free server setup and it wants a license, which you get by filling in an online form. Uh, okay. <laughs> The conversion to NII from DICOM was handled by a tool named DCM to NII. After this, I set up the folder structure expected by FreeSurfer and dropped a converted file into place. From here, it was a case of running MRI convert as another data type conversion step, which then could be used via the recon all command. Variable name must begin with a letter. I have not a clue what that means. <laughs> Never mind. It was a bug in Recon All. It doesn't like spaces in folder names, so bear that in mind. Okay, longest step now is running, which is Recon All. It might take up to about 10 hours, so I'm gonna head off and come back a bit later on. But you don't have to wait, because with the power of editing, it is now one week later. The actual process of running Recon All only took about two hours on my machine but I had the great idea of going out on New Year's Eve, catching COVID, and then spending the rest of the time watching The Expanse, which by the way, is my all time favorite sci-fi show. At this point though, I do have a 3D model. You may notice there's a bit of a problem in the back here. There's a big chunk missing. Now, there is actually a few things you can do in FreeSurfer to fix this, but they kind of went right over my head. So instead, I just re-ran Recon All with brain data that I have just in different orientations. So side on versus front on. And this seemed to give me a much better model at the end, but not quite perfect still. To actually generate the model after running Recon All, I simply ran MRIs convert and that did the magic. This generated model is just the cortical region of my brain but I wanted to also include the cerebellum for that classic brain look. I'm skipping the steps here for that, but they can be found in the guide linked in the video description. I then loaded both models into MeshLab, applied smoothing, and generated a single model by creating a union of the two. That was then loaded up into Tinkercad, where I scaled it down by 50% to better fit on my printer and added a stand. It was then time to get it ready for printing. has come away from the print bed there. So far, that hasn't 
caused any issues. I hope I've got enough uh, filament left. <laughs> From first impressions, it looks like the prints come out pretty well. You can make out all the folds very nicely on the model. And one fun thing that I noticed when I was cleaning it up, that there was a lot of support material inside each and every fold, which was a nightmare to try and pick out. And I bet you have missed some. There is quite a fair amount of, sort of roughness where the print was on top of support material. And I think that's down to my nozzle height on the printer. Someone on Twitter very kindly reached out and you know, pointed out I probably have some calibration issues. So thank you for doing that. I'm pretty happy with how the stand works with this. Now, originally I was gonna print the model in one, but after checking the print times of being 20 hours, I was like, ah, no. So I printed them separately, which had the added benefit of using less support material. Come on. Look how cool it is to be able to hold your own brain in your hand. It's pretty surreal, to say the least. I want to give a thank you to Mohan Gupta, and I really hope I pronounced your name correctly, because I've used their guide to actually do all of the work with FreeSurfer to get this model out of my MRI data. So I've put a link to their guide in the description below, which will also be useful for you to be able to do this yourself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this, and I'll see you in the next one.